Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97, and welcome to this episode. In this episode, I'll be using the Lamborghini Affitator at Tokyo Expressway. So in this episode, I'll be giving you guys a new full guide of this car, since we got the new uh, physics change from update 1.49. So in this particular build, I'll be showing you guys the step by step process of how to get the car. The parts you need, uh, if you guys want to copy delivery I have on the car, you can do that as well. I'll share that. Uh, the parts you need from both GT Auto and from the chain shop in your setup. And also show you guys uh, what you also need at GT Auto. So, without no further ado, let's get straight into the episode. So, if you guys are wondering how can you get the Lamborghini Defense Door, well, there's two ways. You can actually win it at a random ticket minigame if it lands on the spotlight, but it'll always be at Brand Central. So let's go to Brand Central, click on Europe, go to Italy, and then choose Lamborghini. It will be the third uh, map actually you see on the top grid, and here it is right here. It's gonna be more toward the uh, the right side of the list. Lamborghini for the door, especially a really good car. Very iconic, especially back in the year 2011. Um, I remember when this car came out, really, made huge headlines in all kinds of racing games like Forza, uh, Need for Speed franchise, so this car is very much well worn, well known. Um, amazingly good sets, this car is also a all-wheel drive train uh, with over 690 horsepower, 500 pounds of torque, the weight is at 3472 with aspiration being actually aspirated, and the cost is about 400,000 credits. So looking at this car, especially the points, this car looks like to be a real strong contender uh, to be a real force to be reckoned with at Tokyo Express Bay. We'll just have to do some nerfing a little bit on the car uh, for it to be eligible for the race. But other than that, let's go ahead and start to number two. Our next part of the build, we're going to go ahead to GT Auto, go into the car maintenance and service, and we're going to go ahead and install the white body. We're going to lower the points overall just for a little bit. Uh, you just got to get 100,000 credits to do this modification after doing that if you guys would like to follow me in the game there's my profile jeffrey gt 7 yt that's my gt7 profile you can just follow me so search uh, my profile jeffrey g 7 at showcase for either race photos or um on styles uh, you can follow me through the game as we have just now hit 400 followers so thank you all of you guys following me in the game literally through the game itself uh now let's say if you don't follow me in the game but you're just curious to see what livery this is. This actually is a pretty cool livery. This is actually from Rich Jones. Um, and I know this creator right here does a really amazing job uh, with these 2D anime uh, liveries from all kinds of cars. So I just decided to go ahead and roll with it with this particular livery. It looks really good. I mean, the 2D anime liveries, they just look eye-popping. has that Borderlands franchise look. Uh, to be honest, but if you guys want to check out this livery and add it to your own collection, those are the three top hashtags you can look for it. I recommend 2D, might be your best shot to easily find it, that's the easiest way to find it. Uh, just make sure you have it, have it to wide before you actually get the livery. So if you guys, let's say you don't want the livery but instead you want the parts, no problem, I'll be able to show you guys what parts you need for the car. So, I did a few things differently uh, than what the livery came with the car. Uh, so first things first, we're going to have the standard wheels from the car. Uh, just keep the first two categories standard and make sure the offset is set to wide. Uh, for the custom parts, the front is going to be type A. After you get that equipped, the side is going to be type B. Uh, the rear is going to be type A as well. And then last but not least, the wing is going to be custom wing set. I have mine set to low at the plate number 7, even though I don't really think it matters. Uh, the height of the wing but that's going to be it for the custom parts now moving on to the setup we got ourselves our sport hard tires for our, our tire compound suspension we're going to keep it stocked so we're just going to skip the suspension uh differential we're going to have it fully customized and torque is going to be five for both front and back the acceleration is going to be 10 for both the front and back as well and then for the braking sensitivity, it's going to be 15 for the front and back. Uh, for the torque, Victorine center differential, it's going to be 2575, 25 for the front, 75 for the rear. After you get that settled, we're then going to move over to the aerodynamics. The front is going to be 90, which is actually the default setting when you get the front on the car. Uh, the rear is going to be 370. After you do that, uh, we're going to move down to the power restrictor, adjust it to 90. 
after you get that done, uh, transmission is going to be fully customized, manual transmission. Top speed is going to be 360 kilometers automatically, and as we go to the far right, you can see everything else is pretty much stocked. Uh, this is optional if you want the, the brick controller, if you want to, that's optional. And that's going to be it for our build. So, the question is how good is this car with all these parts, and plus between the nerfing, well, I could say the car is very, very quick and very strong. Um, I would say just be a little bit careful on your fuel management, but other than that, uh, you should be in good shape uh, in this race. You can just easily see how quickly we're going through the field um, as we just cracked inside the top 10 as we exit out the tunnel. And you can see we're just picking up spots left and right. has really, really good straight line speed. As we hit the first turn, we're going to be right behind the GTR, uh, at, right at P6, but uh, the car's handling is actually decently good. Um, it's not as over understeery per se compared to a Honda or a um, GTR, especially the Honda. I know the Honda can be a little bit understeery a good bit, uh, but for this particular build with the Lamborghini, uh, I could tell the car actually you're able to get back to the power a lot sooner uh, than you would with a Honda or with a GTR. I got to do the GTR pretty soon and try to do a updated build on it. Uh, since we have the new physics change, but going back uh, with the slapper game, and you can see it already in the top four, so we're actually making some really good progress uh, within this race. Um, just be a little bit careful about the little bit of the understeer. We do have some little bit of front downforce on the front of the car, which is going to help a little bit, uh, but just be careful to brake a little bit earlier uh, so that way uh, you'll be able to have some time to for the car to react and get a good bite out of those corners. But, see we built ourselves p3 got ourselves just barely cleared from the older impreza uh, p3 is a really good start for us and you can see right in front of us we have the rx7 rear mirror and then of course the leader is the honda and we actually can see uh in just a little bit in frame uh the honda nsx ai driver so we actually are a lot closer uh in this particular start of the run than uh previous runs but as we get to the first lap done, we're going to get ourselves quite a very strong toe from the Raymond RX-7. Look how much speed we're getting. We're going to get a huge, huge momentum and speed over the Raymond easily passing it for P2 as we did at 218. So we're pretty close to 217 on that first lap. So a really good quick first lap for us. As you can see, the speed is actually pretty impressive too with this car. We're going to easily... Uh, be able to go over two miles per hour before we hit our first breaking point uh, into the first turn and good chances of us getting the, the lead very early in this race is actually pretty high you can see we see the HUD of the Honda uh, beginning lap two I can tell the grip is actually it's a lot better uh, since the track is drying off and we should be able to make ourselves a good run at the leader get a great shot um, pretty much halfway through lap two uh, to take the lead pretty early in the race and try to see if we can run away with it as well. But first, pretty much after the first sector, got purple very easily. And as we head to the upper pass, we're going to break. We're going to stay in fifth gear through this section, gaining some more time on the leader, being able to be right on key to get back on the throttle, even though we did actually did tap the wall, but it didn't really slow us down that much. Heading to the next corner, you can see we got ourselves a good exit out of that corner. We're going to put it right beside the Honda. We got the port line going to shift down the fourth and got ourselves lead about halfway through lap two which is a good good run so far for us so we're going to go ahead now and fast forward to a little bit later in the race to lap number five this is going to be our high lap of the race you can see both lap two and three were 207s as we approach the end of lap four to lap five we just now correct inside the middle of the 206 so this car really does have some really good race pace but Lap 5 is going to be our fastest lap of the race, so I'll let you guys watch this clip, see what the car can do, and then I'll see you guys when we get to our pit stop.
Alright, so we did 206.323, which I thought was pretty quick. Fast forward to lap 7, uh, we're going to go ahead and go pit road to get ourselves some fuel. Now, I've actually had to do some fuel saving. Uh, we had to shift, uh, do some half shifting uh, through the gears uh, just to be on the, on the safe side. Just make sure we had enough fuel to go inside pit road. But other than that, you should have pretty much a good bit of fuel that you can save while driving on manual. Now, if you drive on Mac, I would recommend just having your fuel uh, save mode to number three or four on the map. We're going to add an extra fuel to the car just to make sure we get enough buffer uh, to get us extra fuel to the end. And as we get to the race finish, uh, the car was just extremely good the whole entire race, mainly averaging about 206, 207 for our lap times. Um, as we cross the finish line, it's going to be a blistering 2603 um, as our total finish time. And with that, for a pit stop, that is actually pretty impress impressively quick uh, for this car. So as we look at the rest of the stats, 26.03 was our race finishing time. The GTR actually came in P2, which I was actually a little bit surprised. Um, usually you see the rear mirror in P2 or the Honda NSX, depending where the out track. But uh, 206.323 was our fastest lap on lap 5. And yeah, I really recommend you guys giving this car a shot. Got the clearance bonus, and that's going to be it for this run. So... Really recommend you guys getting that car, giving it a shot. If it doesn't work out for you, then I really recommend just save it for Lamar. Here's a preview of the next episode using the Jaguar XRJ9 at Spa. Had a request to do this particular run build, so that's going to be the preview of the next episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave a like. And if you guys are interested and like to see some more of my content down in the future, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys like to check out the episode I did cover using the Ferrari 330p4 at Tokyo Expressway, you can click on the video right there as I also gave a full guide. Plus our PRT Racing League uh, races we did at Watkins Glen and at Koto Park. Uh, that's also included in the episode as well. But with all that being said, hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.